You're listening to the Free Thinkers Club Podcast Network. Yo, what's going on, AFC fam? It's, it's your boy, AJ. And yeah, that's right. I'm doing the intro. We mixing it up a little bit. And that's because we're continuing the, the interviews with Fighter Series that Derek started a couple weeks ago. And this week, I'm bringing you some heat from my hometown, from my heart, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And this week, I got Jerome the Renegade Rivera. Hey, Jerome, how's it going, Doc? I'm doing good, AJ. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. Thank you so much for joining me, dog. And uh, as, a, as a New Mexican, I feel almost obligated to ask you, red or green? Oh, bro, I go Christmas. You already know. Christmas. Hey, man, I can't deny it, man. The little best of both worlds. I got you. But uh, the, yeah. the real the real one, as a, as a Santa Fe, as a Santa boy, you know, uh, the pantry or Tomasitas? Oh, that's a tough one, bro. Honestly, Tomasitas probably growing up but right now. It's the pantry. Oh, okay. Okay. I feel you. I, I've, I've been pantry since day one, man. So I like it. I like it. Now, uh, for uh, my diet food, right now, bro, you got me thinking about all this good food. <laughs> right? Oh, man. I'm sorry. I, ho- I hope you're not in camp, or uh, even if you are in camp, maybe you can sneak a little bit, uh, a little bit pantry from the side. Right. Yeah. No, I just <laughs> had that like last week. So got to get it in. I got about one more weekend and then it's all on the grind. That's good, bro. That's good. So, uh, so for the viewers that don't really know you, you're a pro in 2014, but tell me a little bit, how did it all start? Uh, so I was always like super competitive growing up. Um, I used to wrestle from about kindergarten to about eighth grade. And, uh, like I was always intrigued by fighting. I used to watch like Dragon Ball Z growing up. And I remember I used to, uh, my mom used to work at a hotel and she would like rent me a room to go hang out in. I remember I used to go and like play fight and act like I was the characters scrapping it out. <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, I started, I started watching UFC when I was in about fifth grade. Um, I started watching UFC when I was in about fifth grade, and it was just like, I was just addicted to it. I was like this young kid, uh, maybe 10 years old, and like I'd be asking my grandma, she's like, what do you want for your birthday? I'm like, can you buy me the UFC pay-per-view? There used to only be a few uh, back then. So yeah, you know, I was just kind of like really intrigued by it when I first saw it. I always used to tell people that I was going to get involved in it, and I would say that for years and years. And finally, when I was 16, I got introduced to a jiu-jitsu school, and the moment I walked in there, it just kind of changed my life. I never looked back. That's dope, man. That's dope. As a as a kid who grew up, you know, scrapping in the streets and watching the UFC, man, that's like my ultimate dream. So dude, that's that's epic, man. I'm super super jealous. So, but if I had to ask you if you could be a three division champ in the future or have a million dollars to fight, which one would you take? I uh, got to go with that three division champ, bro. You know, that's a big legacy to do something like that. So yeah, I'd, t- I'd take the, uh, I think the warrior me would have to take the three division champ over the money. Bro, that's respect. Cause like, that's exactly like you said, that's a, that's a real warrior of a heart, man. So, uh, so after, you know, you had your Dana White contender series victory, you took a short notice fight at Bantamweight and then fought at flyweight, and then took a short notice fight at featherweight, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. And to me, you know, that speaks of that savage, you know, that warrior mentality that you were already talking about. And is is that is that true? Is that what it was, or was this more of a calculated approach that you and your team were taking? Yeah, no, that's just the warrior in me, bro. You know, uh, they called us up a month after that contender series fight, and they're like, "Hey, you want to fight?" You want to be in the UFC? So I'm like, you know, you can't turn that down no matter what weight I was. I told them, you know, I can only fight at 135. So like, all right, cool. Um, second fight in, I got to go back to my natural weight class at flyweight. So that's that's where my career is going to be is at flyweight for right now. I'm not planning on moving up or anything like that anytime soon. Um, that being said, after I had that Figueredo fight in Abu Dhabi, they literally, I had a week off. I got to relax a little bit. I kind of started getting back in the groove, working out again. And then they called me up that Tuesday before February 6th. And they're like, hey, how, how's your body feeling? My manager called me. I'm like, uh, I feel pretty good. Why? He's like, what's your weight at? I'm like, uh, I honestly don't even want to check. How come? He's like, uh, yo, you want to fight this weekend? I'm like, this weekend, this Saturday, you want me to fight? He's like, yeah. And then uh, 
I was like, hold on, let me check my weight really quick. And honestly, that's the heaviest I've weighed in a long time. I got all the way up to 157 after that. So I told him, I'm like, you know, if I fight, the only way I can make weight is if we fight at 145. He's like, hold up, let me make a phone call. And uh, so I called my coaches, talked to everybody. And, you know, at that point, uh, looking back, like in hindsight, you know, it may not have been the smartest decision to, I mean, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people starting off 0-2 in the UFC probably wouldn't take a fight two weight classes above their normal weight class uh, on their third fight in their contract. But, you know, I tried for greatness. Um, I really, truly believed I could win that fight. And I still believe if I fought O'Day again that I can beat O'Day. But that night I went out and I made a mistake and that's a part of the game. And it's all just a learning process. And I still got one more fight on contract. And now it's time for me to go showcase what I truly uh, believe that I can do and uh, make it hard for those guys to not uh, give me a contract extension. So that's yeah, very true, brother. Fight the full camp. Yeah, yeah, man. And as a as a fan of the sport, man, I respect that. And I know a lot of us us fans respect that warrior mentality that you're actually able to just say. Fuck it, whoever, whenever, I don't give a shit. I'll fight them and I'll beat their ass. And you know, as we got, like I said, you got to respect it. So, you know, you you already alluded to it that you already found your your home in the weight class. But uh, who, who's next on the chopping block? You know, and, and why? Like, who who are your team looking for? <clears throat> uh, you know, right now I'm just ready for anybody that they throw at me. You know, I'm I'm not in any position to be like, hey, you know, I want this guy or that guy. It's just kind of whoever they throw in front of me, it's time to go and uh, make a statement against that dude. I have a couple guys in mind that I have a feeling they might throw at me. <clears throat> One of those guys being uh, Zalgas Zumagalov. I think he's from like Mongolia, kind of in that area, Mongolia, Russia. He started off 0-2. He's a 25er also, so I kind of have that guy on my radar, you know, keeping an eye out. But as far as like who do I care to fight, I just want anybody. I want anybody at 125 with a full camp they can have a number next to their name or not you know I'm, I'm just ready to go and uh do what i keep saying i'm gonna do and do what i know i can do i love it brother i love it that's that's awesome dude. that savage mentality it gets me hyped so you already said you know you'll fight whoever in the weight class whenever but if you had to pick from one either current like famous pro or a former famous pro who would you fight why and how would you finish them Oh, man. That's a tough one, bro. Um, if I could pick anybody, a famous pro, 125, I'd have to say Demetrius Johnson. Because uh, coming up, um, that's just who I looked up to. You know, that's who I was always watching was Demetrius Johnson, studying that guy. And I'm like, this dude is so good. So uh, to be able to share the octagon with him, and have the chance to beat him, that would be something pretty special for me. And that's a challenge that, I mean, like I said, I've played fighting DJ in my head so many times. So when he left the UFC, I was like bummed out. I'm like, oh, shoot, I don't get my chance at him. But um, yeah, you know, I, I would, I think that'd be a pretty fun uh, fantasy fight for me. Okay, and went, went straight to the top of the mountain, huh, DJ? That's crazy, brother. That's that's respect. So if what was your favorite DJ fight then? You going with the uh where you where you flying tri uh arm what's it called flying arm bar uh oh, I can't remember the other guy's name right now. What what's your favorite DJ moment? Uh I that one actually isn't my favorite moment because Ray Borg used to be my teammate, so seeing that kind of hurt me a little bit. I was really pulling for Ray Borg. That would have been something special to see that. Um my favorite DJ moment was probably when he fought John Dodson just to see the the adversity that he overcame because, you know, I think he was more technical than Dodson, um, but Dodson had more power. And every single time Dodson would put his hands on him, like Demetrius would kind of get dropped. Like that first three rounds, I don't know how many times he got knocked down, but he would just get up and get up and get up. And I think that was really cool to see the championship mentality that he had. That, that was a scrap, bro. And like you're like you're saying, it was good to see that dog in him come out because that was impressive. We'll, we'll wrap back to DJ in just a second, but I gotta ask, did you see last week's uh last week's pay-per-view card with the Peter Yan knee, illegal knee? Oh uh, yeah, that was very unfortunate for him. 
Did now uh, I know like everybody, you know, super unfortunate, big, big travesty, all the stuff. But did you see DJ's tweet about it? DJ? No, I didn't. Yeah, Mighty Mouse. So Mighty Mouse t- tweets out that uh, people shouldn't be allowed to stall out the game and that knees to the head sh- on the ground and opponents should be legal. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I think DJ is saying that because he fights in one championship now. I think <laughs> if DJ was still in the UFC, I don't think he'd be saying that. Because they in one, they allow soccer kicks, right? Yep, yeah, and then you can kick them in the head while they're down. Can you knee to the head when they're down or no? I'm not sure on that one, but I do know that you can you can kick while down. You can kick a down opponent. Yeah, I know you can kick while down. So, I mean, if you're ready to be kicked in the face while being a downed opponent, I'm sure he doesn't really mind a knee too much now. So, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, but as far as stalling it out, though, I don't think people should be able to stall it out there because, like, that stuff they used to play back in the day, I'm glad refs don't let it happen no more. People would put, like, a couple fingers on there and take it on and pull it off because – it's hard when you're in the heat of the moment, you know, like when you're in there fighting, it's, I mean, you're going off instinct a lot of times, like sure, you're trying to revert back to your skill and your training, but you're in a fight and it's kind of hard to make those uh, judgment calls sometimes. It's, I, I can understand that, man. And a little bit to that, um, as Corey Sanhagen alluded to, or was talking about in the Joe Rogan podcast, I don't know if you caught it, where he was saying that once you get locked in that cage, he needed to bring this mentality of either you or me that we're dying in that cage is that sort of the mentality you bring to the fight aspect or is this kind of a I don't know you explain to me what's your mentality going on going in there <clears throat> yeah I think that's a really good mentality to have um it's crazy like I think the addicting thing for fighters is like every single time you go out there's like an experiment right you could try something new every time you can revert back to what works good for you um I think a few years back, I used to almost get like a little bit too emotional. You know, I'd like flip the switch like before I went out and it was like kill or be killed. And I was ready to fight. That dude was trying to take everything I had and I'd get a little too emotional. And uh, so like over the years, I've kind of tried to dial it back a little bit and kind of make it like a controlled chaos and control my emotions a little bit more. And I've been finding that... um, I think I do better when I just kind of let loose and I'm just me, you know, and, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely though that I think that's a good mentality to have is kill or be killed. Cause I mean, if you think about it and the brutal honesty of it, like you, you guys are trying to kill each other and the only person that's stopping you is a referee. So that's definitely the mentality you got to have. That's a good point, man. It makes me think of, uh, that Kevin Holland, Jacare Souza fight. If, uh, if Herb Dean wasn't in there, that boy was dying. It, it was, uh, I don't know if you caught that one, but he was over him, man. It was, that's, it's, it's crazy to see what you guys do. And as a fan, man, it's super impressive. I got I gotta really respect it. So, um, I'm just trying to think of a, a couple other things, man. I'm, I'm so happy you joined us. Uh, really, I, I we're kind of answering all I got for you, man. Anything you can tell the fans out there going forward and kind of just something last, last, uh, last things for you, man. Uh, you know, I just want to like say to everybody, uh, you know, don't give up on me. Um, I think my first three fights in the UFC, you know, it sucks that they didn't go my way. I really wish I would have won all three of those fights. And I think I could have won all three of those fights. But I think the reason I didn't win those fights is because of inexperience. And I think I kind of needed to face those tough. I didn't need them. Sure, I'd have been fine without them. But, you know, those those losses that I faced now have just made me so much better. I feel mentally so much stronger. Physically, I'm getting stronger every day. I'm doing everything I can to make myself uh, the sharpest fighter that I can be. So, yeah, everybody, Team Renegade, you know, don't give up on me. I'm coming strong. Probably going to fight again maybe June or July. So we're getting back on the grind. We're ready, feeling good. Let's do it. Hell yeah, brother. They uh, they say you learn your, your biggest lessons from your losses, my man. And I see big things coming from you, especially because that warrior mentality and that that Santa New Mexico heart, brother. I know that thing's huge. So it's uh, I see big things, and I know that Renegade family, we're pumping for you. And uh, yeah, thank you again for joining us here at the AFC camp, my man. We, it means a lot to us, and we'll be, uh, we'll be watching these fights, man. Appreciate that, bro. Thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate the time. Hey, thank you, brother. Thank you very much. We'll uh, we'll catch you later.